हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई अग्रवाल ए एस असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन सिविल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट सांदी पानी टेलिंग कैंपस लातूर द टूल टॉपिक इज एनालिसिस ऑफ डिटर्मिनेट पिंग जॉइंटेड फ्रेम बाय कैस्टिक लॉन्स थेरम now the learning outcome after watching this video the student will be able to apply casting lens theorem to pin jointed frame and also a student will be able to analyze the pin jointed frame now the casting lens theorem if a linearly elastic structure is subjected to a set of loads the displacement of any loads in its direction is equal to the partial derivative of a total strain energy with respect to that load so this is the formula delta i is equal to del u by del p i here u is the strain energy so partial derivative of the strain energy so what is the u for the axial force that u is equal to integration a p square divided by twice a e into delta z now put this u into our first equation so keep this equation so delta i is equal to delta by delta pi integration p square divided by twice ae into delta z so partial derivative of this strain energy with respect to pi that becomes here delta i is equal to summation p into delta p by delta pi into l by ae here a p is the force developed due to external loads and here delta p by delta pi is a forces developed due to the fictitious force and l is a length of individual member a is the area of individual member and e is the modulus of elasticity now this is the problem uh, determine the displacement vertically at joint d here we have to uh, find out the uh, displacement at d vertically these are the data all the top uh, calls members area is equal to 1000 mm square all bottom calls members area is equal to 2000 mm square all vertical and diagonal members area is equal to 1500 mm square and e is equal to 200 kN per mm square now this uh, uh, span is 3 meter uh, span is 3 meter and here height is a uh, 4 meter so now first step is to calculate the a dsi degree of setting element c whether the frame is the indeterminate or determinate so now the formula is dsi is equal to m plus r minus 2j m is the number of members here that is the 8 ab bc cd d ef then bf and the ce so m is equal to 8 here r is equal to 4 because these are the pin jointed at a and ef so r is equal to 4 and the joint is equal to 6 a b c d e and f so j is equal to 6 so put this data into our first formula dsi is equal to 8 plus 4 minus 2 into 6 so that becomes the dsi is equal to 0 it means this frame is a, a determinate frame now the question in the mind of the student that what are the different steps to analyze this frame so take a pause and think over it so the steps are what the p analysis to find the member force due to the applied load and the k analysis to find the member force due to the fictitious force so now first is the p analysis that is the forces develop in this frame due to these two external load 200 kN and the 100 kN so we are taking here first find the reactions so sigma f sigma mf is equal to 0 so we are taking here sigma mf is equal to 0 so these are the our assumed directions of the reaction at a and the reaction at b if the answer is positive the direction is the correct otherwise we have to change the direction so these are the our initial assumed directions so take here sigma 200 into 3 here this is the clockwise rotation then 100 into 6 this other than the clockwise rotation that is why positive and here the ha here at the ha into the 4 this is the anti clockwise rotation that is why is a minus that is equal to 0 so 
so h a becomes the 300 kilonewton so at so h f becomes also the 300 kilonewton but in the reverse direction because here sigma f x is equal to 0 so here is a 300 kilonewton towards the left so 300 kilonewton towards the right so h a becomes 300 and h f also becomes the 300 kilonewton now we have to apply the method of joint here and consider the one by one joint here so now here we have considered the joint b but at their at their joint is no load at the joint d that is why fcd and fed becomes zero at the joint d there is no load so here this f c d and f d e becomes the zero now we are considering the joint a here so this is the direction of towards the left is the h a directions now here we want to find the f a b so here sigma we have to apply the sigma fx so for the sigma fx now this is the direction we have assumed here towards the right so here we are considering towards the right is a positive and towards the left is a negative so here h a is now here h a here considered um, towards the left is positive so h a is positive minus f a b that is equal to 0 so put the value of h a is 300 so 300 minus f a b so here f a b is equal to 300 kilonewton now the next is consider the joint c so we know this length e d is 3 and 3 meter and height is the uh, 4 meter so this angle becomes 53.13 degree so now here we are applying the sigma fy conditions so initially we are assuming the this directions of this force fce this is the fce this are we are assuming towards the joint now this is the resolution of this fce vertically is fce sine 53.13 degree and horizontally fce cos 53.13 degree now here apply the sigma fy here so fy is what fc we are considering upward positive and downward negative so this fc is sine 53.13 degree is a positive and minus here the 100 that is equal to the 0 so we got the value fc is equal to 125 then here this is the sign at the c it is towards the joint also at the e this should be the towards the joint and the value is fc is equal to 125 now here resolve this horizontally sigma fx at the joint c here so this what fc cos 53.13 here we are assuming this direction is the away from the joint initially so here we can say that toward the right is a positive and toward the left is negative so this if you resolve horizontally so this becomes fc cos 53.13 degree here is toward the right so that consider the positive and here is toward the left is considered as negative so that is minus fbc so put the value of fce here is 125 cos 53.13 degree minus the fc fbc so fbc becomes the 75 kilonewton so now here again apply here the at the joint b is the away from the joint so here f b c is 75 kN. Now we are considering the joint B at here. So we got the force in A B members, we got the force in the B C members. So now our remaining is the what? Force in the B E and the B F. So now here we are applying the sigma f x condition at the joint B. So now initially we are assuming the direction of this F B F in the towards the directions so now resolving of these forces like this 
vertically is the FBF sine 53.13 degree and horizontally is FBF cos 53.13. So here we are applying the uh, condition sigma fx is equal to 0, so horizontally. So we are considering towards the right is positive and towards the left is the negative. So this FBF cos 53.13 becomes the positive here and also here FBC force is here that is also the positive and minus the FAB because this FAB we are assuming this as a towards the left it already is the left that is why is a minus so put the value of FBC is 75 and FAB is the 300 so like this FBF cos 53.13 plus 75 minus 300 that is equal to 0 so we got the value of F b f is equal to 375. Now again the we have to resolve this the joint consider the joint now the E here. So at the E this is a previous force that is what F C E is equal to 125 kN and here direction of this force is the uh, towards the joint. So we are now assuming here applying the sigma f5 conditions. So we are applying assuming that fbe is the vertical directions. So this is our assumed direction of fbe is the vertically. So now resolve these forces horizontal and vertical directions. So horizontal direction is fce cos 53.13 and is vertically downward is fce sin 53.13. One three. Now, here we are applying the sigma f y condition. We are considering upward force as positive and downward force as the negative. So, this f b becomes the vertically upward, so that becomes the positive, and this f c e sine fifty three point one three is downward, so that becomes the negative. So, in this way, f b e minus f c e sine fifty three point one three is equal to zero. So, put the value of f c e is 125 here. So that equation becomes FBE minus 125 sin 53.13 is equal to 0. So we got FBE is equal to 100 kN. Then next we have to resolve this horizontally so that we got the value of FEF. Initially this we know this uh, value of mem member force in the D is the 0. So this is the uh, already we got the value of Fc is towards the joint. So we are assuming of B of F EF is the toward the joint. This is our assumed directions of F EF. So resolve this horizontally like this. So here horizontal component of this Fc is Fce cos 53.13. So we are considering here the toward the right is plus and toward the left is the minus. So FEF is a plus minus here the FCE cos 53.13. So that is equal to 0. So put the value of FCE here the 125. So we got the value of FBE is equal to a 75 kilonewton. here 75 kilonewton so is toward the joints here also toward the joints so here we got the member force in the all the members a b b c c d d e then c e then b e and then e f so now go for the k analysis so now for the k analysis we have to apply the fictitious force at the joint d like this now we are applying here is the uh, towards downward, vertically downward. Now if the final answer is uh, positive, it means the deflection in the downward directions. If the final answer of this deflection is negative, means what we have applied here PV downward direction, that is the wrong and that is the upward. So deflection is in the upward directions. So now 
again you have to apply the method of the joint and find out the forces in the each member by applying the force pv at the joint d vertically downward so now here first we have to apply here sigma ff mf is equal to 0 find out the reactions so now these are the our assumed directions of ha and the hf so we are taking here the sigma m mf is equal to 0 so now this is the clockwise pv into the 6 so this pv that is here is a pv means that is the 1 1 into pv so uh, 1 into 6 minus ha into the 4 because this is a clockwise and this is the anti clockwise here H A is equal to that becomes a, a 6 by 4 that is 1.5 PV. So we got the value of H A is 1.5 PV. So automatically H F is equal to again the 1.5 PV but that in the opposite direction because here sigma f x of this frame should be the 0. So we got the value of H F is equal to 1.5 PV but in the opposite directions. So these are the magnitude of HA and HF. Now, we are considering the joint D here. So, here is a now denoted as KDE and KCD. So, resolving this here in the upward direction first. Sigma FY is equal to 0 at the joint D. So, here we are assuming the KF is the vertical directions and this is we have provided the PV force in the downward directions. So, we are considering upward is positive, downward is the negative. So, K C D is the positive and P V is the negative. So, K C D minus P V that is equal to 0. So, K C D is equal to the P V. So, this is away from the joint at this year. So, also denote this at the C in the same way. Now, apply the sigma f x at the joint D. So, here we know that at the joint D, there is no horizontal force, so automatically KDE becomes the zero. So here, like this. So here is away from the joint at the D. So also at the C, this should be the away from the joint. And KCD is equal to the PV and KDE is equal to the zero. Now consider the joint C here. Now we have to find out the KBC and the KCE. So first we are applied here the sigma fy conditions so we are assuming these are the directions of kbc and the kce so kc resolve this kce in the vertical directions so here that becomes kce a uh, sine 53.13 and we know here we are assuming that vertical is positive and vertical upward is positive and vertical downward is the negative. So here KCE sin 53.13 is a positive because if you resolve this KC in the vertical relation that we have seen the uh, member forces that is the vertically. So that is the sign. So that is the positive and this force that is KCD is the downward direction that is by negative that is my minus KCD. Now put the value of KCD in this equation. So here becomes KCE is sine 53.13 minus the PV is equal to 0. So here we got the value of KCE is equal to 1.25 PV. Now next is to apply sigma fx condition at the joint the C here. Now assume direction of KB is towards the left. Okay. And the kc that already we have calculated and that is answer is positive it means what you have direction assume is toward the joint is the correct so now apply this in the horizontal directions so resolve this kc in horizontally so that is toward the left so that becomes the positive so kce cost 53.13 resolve this kc horizontally that becomes kc cost 53.13 minus why because minus because we are considering toward the right is positive and toward the left is the negative that is why is minus kbc is equal to 0 so we got here put the value of kc is 
125 1.25 pv at here so we got here the kbc is equal to 0 0.75 pv so we got the value of kbc here and kc is here so here is away from the joint at the c in the same way at the joint b is away from the joint here is toward the joint at the joint c so here also the toward the joint at the e and kbc is equal to 0 0.75 pv and kc is equal to 1.25 pv then we are considering here the uh, joint e so at the joint e we are applying the sigma fy conditions so resolve this kc in the in the vertical direction and the horizontal direction so here is a vertical direction is what here we are assuming the b k b e in the vertical direction upward and k e f in the toward the joint these are the our assumed directions of the forces of k b e and k e f so now k b e here is positive because we are considering vertical upward is positive and resolve this k c e in the vertically so that becomes here the a sign because this angle is the 53.13 because opposite angle this is a 53.13 here so here also becomes the 53.13 so resolve this become the downward so that is why is minus kce sin 53.13 put the value of kce is here 1.25 pv so kbe minus 1.25 pv sin 53.13 is equal to 0 so we got the value of kbe is equal to 1 pv so now resolve this in the horizontal directions at the joint e sigma fx is equal to 0 so we know here we are considering towards the right is positive and this towards the left is negative so if you resolve this horizontally kce that is become the towards the left and that is kce cos 53.13 so here equation is what kef this is the horizontal towards the right is positive and resolve this horizontally remember kce so the kce cos 53.13 and this is the toward the left that is why is a negative so put the value of kce is 1.25 pv this becomes kef minus 1.25 pv cos 53.13 is equal to 0 so kef is equal to 0 0.75 pv now here is toward the joint kef also at the joint f is toward the joint in this way kef is away from the joint so at b also is away from the joint and now we are considering the joint f here so joint f here you are resolving the first is the sigma fx is equal to 0 horizontally so we know here value of hf is 1.5 pv also we got the value of kef that is 0 0.75 pv so now here assume the direction is the towards the joint of the kbf these are the assumed direction if the answer is positive means our direction is the correct so we are resolving this in the horizontal directions and considering that towards the right is positive and towards the left is the negative so this is toward the right is positive and these both are the towards the left that is what these are the negative so here hf is the plus because of toward the right then minus k bf cos 53.13 because resolve this in a horizontal direction that becomes cos and this angle is between this bf and the e is ef is the 53.13 also this k ef is the toward the left is minus now put the value of k ef and the hf in this equation so 1.5 pv minus k bf cos 53.13 minus 0 0.75 pv so we got the value of k bf is equal to 1.25 pv if this value is positive it means what your assumed direction is toward the joint is the correct now 
we are considering the joint A here. Considering the joint A. Now this member is horizontally, so we are considering the sigma f x is equal to zero, and we are finding the force in the member A B, and that is the K A B. So we are considering this is the towards the right. So resolve this horizontally. We know towards the right we are considering the positive, and towards the left that is considering the negative. So K A B minus H A is equal to zero. So K A B is equal to 1.5 PV. So here, now we are applying all the forces. These are the all the values. So this is the K analysis. So this is the total figure that is the P analysis and this is the K analysis. The forces developed due to the external force. This is called as the P analysis, and the forces developed due to this fictitious force PV. That is called as the K analysis. So now a prepare a table and enter all this value into the table. Now we look this how is the table. Now this is the table. These are the members A B B C C D D E E F B F B E and the C E. This is the area in the mm square. So 1000 mm square, 1000 mm square, 1500 mm square, 2000 mm square. 2000 mm square 1500 mm square 1500 mm square and last is the 1500 mm square these are the given data and these are the length of each member 3000 3000 4000 3000 3000 5000 4000 and the 5000 now what is here the this force this is the a uh, a force a uh, develop due to this external loading This is here. This is the P analysis. The uh, forces develop in the members due to this external loading. This is the forces. This is we are considering as a tension as negative and compression as the uh, positive. So here minus 300. It means there is a, a tension in the member AB. So here the what here if the sign is like this, it towards the Away from the joints, these are the away from the joints. So that is indicates there is a, a tension. And here the member E F, that is if the arrows are the toward the joints, so this type of a uh, force is called as the compression force. And here we are considering a compression is the positive, and this uh, tension is the negative. So that becomes the negative minus three hundred minus. 75 0 0. This is plus it means compression. This plus means again here the plus 375 is a compression, and here is a minus 100 is means tension. So B E member is a negative. So let let you take B E here the member is the B E. This is member B E. So this sign is the away from the joint. So this indicates the tension, and that is the Negative we are considering, so we can also consider the tension as positive and compression as negative. There is a no binding of the considerations. Now the last C E is the positive. It means there is a compression. Now the next column is what a member force due to apply load and the fictitious force. Here we are combining the forces. That is why at the member A B. This 300 minus is due to the external ring, and here at the AB, this is the a force develop in the member AB due to this a fictitious force. So here is the addition of this both the forces. So this is minus 300 and minus 1.5 PV. Likewise, we have write all these uh, member forces. Now the next column that is very important here. So here is the a partial derivative of this column. What is here? Del P by del P V. P is the we are considering the total force due to this a uh, applied load, the external load, and the our fictitious force. So partial derivative of this column number five. So if you derivate this column minus three hundred minus one point five U P V. With respect to PV, 
so that becomes only the minus 1.5 here if you derivate this minus 75 minus 0 0.75 pv with respect to the pv so this becomes minus 0 0.75 here 0 minus 1 pv so derivate this this with respect to the only the PV that becomes minus 1.0 because this becomes the constant minus 300 minus 75 0 then 75 375 minus 100 and 110 pv this all becomes the constant and these are become the zero and here a derivation of this with respect to PV so derivative of the PV is with respect to PV is the one that is why it becomes minus 1 to minus 1.5 minus 0 0.75 minus 1 0 then 0 0.75 1.25 minus 1.0 and 1.25 now this last column p into del p by del p v into l by a e this is p is the a force developed in the member due to the external applied load and this is the partial derivative of this column number 5 del p by del p v here column number 6 then is a calculated value into l is the length of individual member a is the area of individual member and e is the area of individual member now here the first now for the a b here what is the p p is the minus 300 this is the minus 300 what here this is the minus this is the 300 so this is the a b value here a force develop due to this external loading the minus 300 so kept here this is minus 300 because of the tension into the del p by del p v here we have calculated this value is minus 1.5 into length of this AB member is the 3000 divided by the area area is the 1000 of this member into the 200 that is the modular shock velocity that already you have given in the problem so calculation of this total equation is the 6.75 now the second for the member BC with minus 75 is the a force developed in the BC due to external applied load into here is the del PV by del del P by del PV that is here minus 0 0.75 this is the a force developed in the member BC due to the fictitious force the PV and derivative of this into the length of the member is the 3000 divided by area is the 1000 into the modulus of elasticity so this becomes 0 0.843 this is 0 this is 0 this becomes 0 0.425 7.81 1.83 1 and 2.60 now our final formula is what a uh, deflection at the joint d that d delta d is equal to that is the summation of p into delta p by delta p v into l by a e so here is the summation of all this uh, displacement so that becomes 19.75 mm so here this value is the positive it means what we have assumed the uh, direction of fictitious force is the downward uh, that is the correct and the displacement at the joint d delta d is in the vertical direction the vertical downward direction and that is the 19.75 thank you